Um, as many of you will know, uh, the primary uh, arena for political discourse in the DRC for this uh, year so far has been the CENCO mediation, the mediation by the Conference Episco Episcopale de l'Église Catholique, um, which was responsible for brokering the December 31st peace uh, political agreement, which um, provided for elections to take place um, in 2017. Um, and also called for the formation of a, a national government of unity under the leadership of a prime minister to be issued from the opposition um, uh, rassemblement, the main opposition uh, alliance. Um, since then, there have been uh, numerous delays initially uh, over uh, some quite technical disagreements, but politically motivated technical agreements about the modalities for nominating a prime minister, but also for uh, who should lead the um, follow-up committee. Uh, we then had a rather cataclysmic event in the shape of the death of Etienne Chisikedi, the leader of the UDPS and of the RASOP, who himself was meant to be occupying some of those key positions. And since then, really, the um, Catholic mediation has been trying to keep the peace or the political accord on track to try and keep all the different parties um, uh, aligned to implement that accord. On the um, 27th of March, Senko, having um, tried very hard to get the key parties to agree on how to, um, to designate a prime minister and on um, how to uh, also uh, designate the leader of the Comité de Suivi, decided at that point to withdraw from the mediation. It basically indicated that its mediation could not go on indefinitely um, and it made some quite sharp comments about the lack of political will of the key players in the DRC, about the fact that the politicians in the country weren't willing to put their agendas um, behind the agenda or the, the well-being of the, of the country at large. Um, this, I think, is uh, a very significant setback. The Senko mediation, as I've said before, was extremely valuable. It had credibility, it was a domestic mediation, it was independent, and it had really made um, significant achievements just by getting the parties to agree to the December 31st accord. But really, um, what, what has ultimately scuppered the implementation of this, um, this agreement mm -hmm. is the fact that with, with Chisikedi, uh, passing away. There have been um, the sort of inevitable splits within the um, opposition, co-opting by the government of elements of the opposition, um, a very opportunistic uh, political elite in the DRC, as in many other countries, essentially falling apart, uh, faced with the possibility of being able to access power. Um, so we've seen some of the leaders of uh, parties that are part of the Rassemblement um, moving away from the Rassemblement, trying to essentially start um, satellite parties of the UDPS or satellite reversions of the Rassemblement claiming legitimacy. And one of those notably is the one led by Joseph Olen um, which also included Bruno Chibala. One of the reasons um, that there were these, these kinds of splits, in addition to the fact that the unifying consensus figure of Chisikedi was no longer present, was also that there was some opposition to the designation of Felix Chisikedi, the son of Etienne Chisikedi, to lead the, the party. And in particular, some of the political veterans of the UDPS were not happy about that. And th that is, to some extent, understandable. But um, for all intents and purposes, the choice of Felix Chisikedi to succeed Etienne Chisikedi was already made by the father before he passed away. Um, and so the party chose to heed, heed that designation uh, for a variety of reasons, but presumably also because the Chisikedi name is an important brand, um, as is the um, UDPS name. And so those are still very important political vehicles in the country. But some of the veterans, um, some of the people who were there with Chisikedi when he started the party in the 80s didn't agree with this, and they are some of the dissidents who have now um, created these satellite parties. This couldn't have um, been more welcome to the uh, Majorité Présidentielle, the ruling alliance. Um, I think I've said before that um, we've always wondered the extent of the sincerity of the Majorité Présidentielle and the extent of its commitment to really implementing the December 31st Accord. Again, uh, Chisikidi's death and the splits that have emerged in the opposition are really a, a great opportunity for the Majorité Présidentielle to backtrack on implementing that, but not to look like the only spoiler in the room. And it is in fact true that uh, one can't place the blame for all of this uh, mess squarely or only on the shoulders of the Majorité Présidentielle. Certainly the, the opposition, which in the past we've, we've really um, 
felt had matured, had become more sophisticated, more diversified and more committed, there is certainly a lot to be said about the, op the opposition's inability to, to remain united and to kind of keep the key goal in mind, and the key goal being credible elections in the DRC as soon as possible. So there are a number of different um, actors here who, 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 who we w want to incentivize to return to the fold. But for the moment, um, we have, I think, uh, we've, we've really um, lost some ground on the December 31st Accords. Um, in the aftermath of the collapse of the Senko mediation, or I should say the, the decision by Senko to end its mediation, uh, Joseph Kabila, the president of the DRC, chose to step into that breach. It should be noted that Joseph Kabila is the person who had asked Senko to take up the mediation after he came under some pressure last year to do so by some of his regional allies. Um, the mediation is now back, if you want to call it a mediation, or the political dialogue is now back in the, the presidency. Uh, many, of course, have criticized this, saying somebody who himself orchestrated the electoral delay cannot now be a neutral player in trying to facilitate the formation of a new government, and I think that is a very fair criticism. It simply doesn't make any sense, but it is what's happened. Um, Kabila, in the last weeks of March and the first weeks of April, did hold discussions with the various different players. He did invite um, the leadership of the Rassemblement, so uh, Félix Tshisekedi, also to participate in those talks. Uh, Félix Tshisekedi refused, as did the leadership uh, of the Rassemblement. Um, the key issue there, again, and this has been the issue since the, the accord was signed, is how do you designate a prime minister with the opposition saying, we give you one name and you will then nominate that person, and with the presidency essentially saying, no, we will accept a, a list of names, three names, and we will then choose from those names. In the end, Kabila chose to do it uh, his way. He nominated uh, Bruno Chibala, who is a veteran UDPS leader who was there with Chisikedi in the 80s um, and who was one of the founders of the UDPS. So by no means someone who isn't well known, by no means somebody who isn't committed to the opposition cause. But in the last few months, Chibala has, um, or since the, the death of Chisikedi and the designation of Felix Chisikedi to lead the UDPS, Chibala left that party and started his own uh, satellite branch with uh, Olengan Khoi. So he's no longer a member of the formal UDPS. He's also no longer a member of the Rassemblement. And therefore, he's not their candidate for the prime minister. So the person who has now been designated prime minister, who is in fact prime minister of the DRC, is someone who was handpicked by Kabila. He is not a consensus candidate. And this is problematic. Um, this is problematic because, of course, what it means, what it's likely to mean, is that when uh, Chibala does form a government, and we, we believe that that is imminent, um, it's unlikely necessarily to follow the blueprint that was agreed on December 31st. So, in other words, the um, apportionment of a certain number of ministries to each of the components to the talks. Um, it's also very likely that the Rassemblement and the UDPS will boycott uh, that government. Um, what that then means is that we have a government that already, out of the gate, um, lacks the legitimacy and the credibility that the country needs to try and restore political stability. Um, and that's really what we're talking about here. The whole point of the December of the Senko mediation and the whole point of the December 31st talks was to come up with a government that had credibility, that emerged from a consensus, and that therefore had legitimacy, um, and that would lead the country to, to elections that would have exactly those qualities, credibility, legitimacy, and transparency. If we now go to um, elections, if in fact that is the scenario, and I'll get to the scenarios later, under the leadership of Bruno Chibala, with a government that doesn't include key figures from the Rassemblement, it may include other opposition parties. Um, we, this is yet to be seen, um, and it probably, in fact, will, and, and not just newly created ones, but possibly even ones like the MLC, who so far have not wanted to participate in government. But exactly what the new government will look like uh, remains to be seen. But it won't be the consensus government that we um, that the accord was meant to deliver. And so it really puts us back into um, the instability that we, we've had for about two years now in the Congo. Um, Immediately after the nomination of Chibala, the uh, opposition did call for a for protest marches in Kinshasa and other cities. Those were not allowed by the authorities, 
And so instead there was a stay away. Um, there's been some kind of, uh, I think, largely academic debate about whether it was successful or not. But I think that uh, those, those who know Kinshasa or any large African city, uh, keeping people away from work for a whole day is, is, is a sign that they uh, are, are adhering to your call, I think. And that's the case in Kinshasa as well. So in other words, the um, nomination of Chibala has not convinced the population at large that um, that it's that's that it's a good move. Um, so that's where where kind of the popular sentiment, where we believe the popular sentiment stands as of last week when this uh, stay away took place. In terms of international reaction to Chibala's nomination, um, almost everybody, including the Security Council, so some of the key players, Belgium, um, the the EU, the United States, France, have all indicated um, a level of discontent, dissatisfaction, disapproval, if you will, of this nomination and have reiterated that the December 31st Accord and the modalities of nominating a new government um, are, are the only real blueprint for the country. Um, this has earned those who've been critical of the nomination quite a lot of, um, of trouble. Um, Belgium has seen its military cooperation with the DRC cancelled um, as a result of that, we, we believe. Uh, the EU was raked over the coals by the Congolese foreign minister for its statement, um, and there have been has been uh, essentially a reaction from the Congolese government saying this is our internal issue. Uh, please don't interfere. Um, the um, African Union has been largely inactive on Congo for for some time now since it played a very important role last year in mediating the October eighteenth um, Accords, but it did have a Peace and Security Council did have a meeting in, um, in March and did put out a statement also stating that the December 31st Accords are the blueprint for the future. So they're on the record um, as, as saying that that is something that they do support. Um, MONUSCO, again, I mean, has had its mandate uh, renewed in March and quite specifically its mandate is to implement the December 31st Accords. So a very political mandate after years of a much more military mandate um, and again, specific reference to those accords. Um, Maman Sidiku, the SRSG in the DRC, has tried to uh, already keep the conversation going. He's held meetings with the new prime minister. He's held meetings with the opposition uh, about trying to get, uh, trying to convene again the key players to 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 chart out the, the way forward um, in 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 and what the next steps might be. Um, the African Union, sorry to come back to that, um, Alpha Conde, the president of the African Union, has also met with some of the key players. He met with Felix Tshisekedi um, in uh, Conakry. He also had the visit of the um, Congolese foreign minister not long ago uh, to um, essentially, as the Congolese foreign minister said, explain the political situation there. We've seen Conde uh, make some sounds about possibly um, getting involved in, the, in, 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 in some kind of new mediation, but I think that remains to be seen. Um, so what does all this mean? Um, what it all means is that I think more than ever, we have to ask ourselves the question of what, what is the government's end game? Remember that we're here because the elections that were due to be held by December 2016 weren't held. There's a constitution of the DRC, uh, which is not a very old one, it's uh, about 12 years old, um, states that elections should have been held at the end of, by the end of last year, that Kabila's second mandate expired then. Uh, we're here because for all intents and purposes the government didn't execute its mandate of making those elections happen. So what does it mean that we now have a prime minister who's been appointed by Kabila, that the political accord, which was on paper and still is on paper, a very va viable blueprint for elections, what does it mean that that accord has now essentially been tossed aside? Um, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see a little bit more in the, in the coming days. I think the initial reaction that the government has had uh, to external criticism of the nomination of Chibala shows us that they're not necessarily in a conciliatory mood. Um, when we saw the accord being signed in October 18th, the accord that was brokered by the AU, which was really the worst case scenario because it didn't have language about Kabila's mandates being limited to do, and it said elections in 2018, um, we, we, we wondered what leverage there might be to get Kabila to go back to the negotiating table because he'd won everything he wanted to win at that in that in that AU brokered accord. In the end, it was Angola that really pushed him back to the negotiating table. Um, I don't know 
who could do that again? I don't know whether Angola is willing to step into this situation at this point or whether um, it's the general confusion um, about who's really to blame, whether the, the, the kind of poor uh, response of the, of the opposition, the, the lack of unity in the opposition will lead even Angola to say, or other players like South Africa to say, look, I think Kabila and the government tried, they did their best, they compromised, they cooperated, in the end, it was out of their hands. So it's not clear that that regional pressure that was successful last time, whether it will again be applied, and if so, whether it will be applied successfully. Um, there are a number of options. Best case scenario is that we have some kind of compromise, I think, between the opposition and between the government. What that could look like is that Bruno Chibala continues to be, uh, or keeps his position as prime minister, I must say, I don't see Kabila revoking that nomination at this point. I think it would be too much of a climb down. It would be a humiliation for him. So I think that we might have to just reckon with Bruno Kibala and uh, sorry, Chibala, and that the opposition will have to accept that. The counterbalance could be Lumbi, uh, Pierre Lumbi leads the Conseil National de Suivi à l'Accord, and that we have him in a very, it's a very senior position that Chesakiri would have held himself had he not passed away. And it's meant to be um, a sort of observatory but authoritative position with key responsibilities that whose job it is to implement the accord, the details of the accord, and deliver elections. That could be a compromise that could work. It would require um, a lot from a lot of concessions from this this also assumes that um, Kabila is continuing to use the December 31st accord as, as a roadmap. That, in fact, the Chibala nomination doesn't mean he's thrown that out as a roadmap. He may choose to say, look, the opposition didn't, didn't play ball. It, uh, it is the spoiler here. And so I'm no longer bound by this accord. And I prefer to use the October 18th accord as my roadmap. That is another possibility. That is really a worst case scenario. Um, that would mean that Kabila rejects the compromise solution where you might have Lumbi um, in that senior position, um, mm. that you don't have any kind of opposition compromise, that you have opposition boycotting the government, which means it doesn't have credibility, um, and that you have essentially the December 31st accord having been completely torn up. Um, if that is, in the worst case scenario, if that is where we, where we end up, then there are still some questions about whether or not Kabila then chooses, the Kabila government then chooses to move towards elections with potentially um, using the October 18th accord with Kabila as a new candidate, um, or not as a new candidate, sorry, as a candidate again, because the October accord technically could allow that. And I'm sure the constitutional court, which is uh, highly politicized, could be instrumentalized to make that possible. Alternatively, uh, Kabila could choose to use a government that he controls through Chibala to um, have a referendum. The referendum, I've always said, is a little bit risky, um, but I think that uh, it's something that the government may feel it has more under control now, given that it's been managing uh, through the CNE, the voter registration process, and we have some serious concerns about the veracity or let's say the transparency of that voter registration process already. So a referendum could be something that they now feel they're more able to control than they were maybe a year ago. Um, so those are the questions. If, if Kabila chooses to move towards elections um, with himself as candidate or even with someone else as candidate, although that would be a surprise given that that's always been the big issue, you know. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, again, because we have concerns about the extent to which the CENI is really um, committed to uh, a transparent process, it could be that uh, it could be that they feel comfortable that they have the outcome of that within their control. Um, and that that would be, in a sense, the perfect kind of next step because it, it, it would confuse even further efforts to try and get Kabila back to consensus. If, if we now see suddenly the CNE coming out with a calendar, well, then what do we do? We have a government that isn't uh, issued from the accord, the December 31st accord, but that's still moving forward with the key issue, which is elections. I mean, it would make it very, very difficult for the international community to then respond and say, well, we still think this government is illegitimate. It would, be, it would require quite a lot of diplomatic maneuvering. It would be a shrewd move. I don't know if it's going to happen. Uh, we've had some um, already this week, some, some, uh, some moves from the majorité présidentielle about setting up a 
uh, a campaign structure for the for the election, and so those may be early indications that is that this is in fact uh, the next the next move. So those are just some of the scenarios. Um, I want to leave it there. There are a lot of other things that that we could talk about. Um, obviously, the violence in the Kasai is of great concern, um, and generally, I think also um, the 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 key issue, which is. Kabila may be able to continue to rule, but can he govern? And um, what does that really mean today in the DRC? And um, what would be the impact of the worst case scenario um, on, on, the, on the short and medium term?